hate it. Hi there, welcome to Life From Above. My name is David Kenny. glad to have you on the program today. Today we have a special guest. We have Scott Judge from the West Virginia School of Preaching. Scott, we're glad you can be here with us. Thank you so much, Mr. Kenny. It's my pleasure to be here, and I'm thankful for the opportunity. Scott is a graduate of the West Virginia School of Preaching. He's finished up his program, or getting ready to, and he wasn't able to come with the original group, so we're glad you be able to come, you're able to come up and spend the day with us and be a part of the show. Now, Scott, you're, I asked you where you were from, and you told me that you were born on an Air Force base or something like that. Where, where are you from that, exactly? That is correct. I was, my dad uh, was in the Air Force, and I was born on Whiteman Air Force Base in uh, Knob Noster, Missouri, uh, on August 18th, 1970. And I remember very little about being in the Air Force or being the, uh, the, son, of a, the son of an Air Force man. Uh, because we moved back to West Virginia when I was about two. So I spent my years growing up in West Virginia, down in Wetzel County, out at Jacksonburg, and uh, lived there till I went to college in 1988. Uh, started at Bethany College and then finished at West Liberty State College there outside of Wheeling. And I believe, uh, if I remember right, we have a, a newsletter that uh, Andy Robinson, the director of the school, uh, supplied to us that uh, you, know, you have your degree in psychology mm -hmm. and now you're completing a two-year uh, preaching program and you are you've been uh, hired by the West Virginia School of Preaching to recruit and tell them a little bit about what position you're going to be doing now because you're not done with the school you're just really just sort of starting just starting and we graduated on June 17th and uh, I actually went to work there on June the 20th and uh, I'm the new advertising and recruiting director and my role and position will be to recruit incoming students to come to the School of Preaching uh, and uh, to take the word uh, of who we are, the West Virginia School of Preaching, out to others and kind of help uh, different people become familiar with what it is that we do there and in the process be able to recruit students uh, to come and uh, to be a part of uh, to be a part of the school. So we'll take a look at uh, recruiting within our uh, base area, I think, of Ohio and West Virginia, but we're wanting to expand a little bit in that out to uh, Pennsylvania and then also even go out of the tri-state area to let people know about the, the, the great work there at the West Virginia School of Preaching and the quality education. Now I have down you're married and your wife's name's Ellie. How long, how long have you been married? Mm -hmm. I've been married 21 years uh, to my beautiful wife, uh, Ellie Judge, and uh, she is my rock in my backbone through it all and uh, she is so supportive of me and the opportunity that I've taken to go back to school and there was a lot of stress and pressure that was on her with me being gone for so long uh, and not necessarily going you know throughout the week I was home every night but I was studying uh, basically till I went to bed so she really picked up a lot of slack and she's just been wonderful for me and so supportive of me and then also our two children uh, we have a, a, an oldest child 17 years old Jonas and a uh, youngest child who will turn 15 in September, Joel. And uh, Jonas will be a senior at uh, St. Mary's High School this year, and Joel will be a freshman. Uh, so time flies. It seems like only yesterday they were born, and uh, now we're getting ready to graduate one and soon to be graduating another. But uh, my whole family has been supportive of me uh, during this endeavor, and uh, they continue to support me, and they're just a uh, uh, wonderful, wonderful family, and I'm so thankful for them and their uh, encouragement to me. It'd be really difficult to do what you've done without that kind of support, wouldn't it? A absolutely. My wife uh, uh, has done so much as far as her work is concerned to be able to help uh, with the family during that period of time and she's been patient with me and <laughs> uh, patient uh, probably far more than uh, probably what I could have been because she's been so understanding with the nights that I would come home and I would uh, need to be working on papers or simply doing a lot of reading, sermon preparation, those kind of things. And uh, yet she was always there to give me a hug when I uh, got home or when she came home and uh, we talked periodically through the days we could. So it's been nice this summer since graduation. I've been able to spend a little more time with her and uh, also the boys and, you know, just do some of those fun things we love. We've been fishing and uh, that's been a, a fun for us. Oh, absolutely. Now tell me, you know, the, the studies you've done, you've, you, know, you have your bachelor's degree in psychology, mm -hmm. and obviously, you know, being a part of the school and going through the school's program, mm -hmm. it's going to help you to be able to more effectively relate to what the school's offering versus what students have to look forward to. What would, you know, 
how important do you think it's going to be to understand and, and how did you find the challenge academically to be able to go through that program? Do you find it challenging and, and in what ways? The, the program is unbelievably challenging and it is a uh, two-year uh, full course. We do 80 weeks, uh, 40 hours a week of course study and we go through every book uh, of, of the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, and then we get a lot of uh, church history, restoration history, uh, take a look at hermeneutics classes as well as homiletic classes, and it is an intensive study uh, during the time that you're there, but it's one of the most rewarding things I've ever done in my life to have the opportunity to study at that level uh, the Word of God. And, uh, you know, I am fortunate, as you mentioned, to have the bachelor degree in psychology and also social work. I spent about 20 years uh, working within those fields, doing a variety of things, uh, working in crisis stabilization and also hospitalization for mental health uh, patients and did a lot of marketing during that period of time as well. So that gives me an opportunity for what I do now to have some familiarity with the traveling and, and uh, with working with other people and, uh, you know, the advertising part of the school just to simply, get, again, get that, get that word out. But uh, the thing with the West Virginia School of Preaching is that uh, it, is a, it is a grind each and every day as far as maintaining uh, your work, your workload, your study verses, and if you wait to the last second to do stuff at, at the school of preaching, you're going to be in trouble because oh, yeah. uh, you're going to be sweating. But uh, it, it is it is so fulfilling there at the school. And one of the things that I noticed right off the bat uh, is things that I have studied for years, and things that I've read for years, and things that I've heard preached for years. That when you take the opportunity to study it a little deeper. Uh, some of what opens up to you and, and how you can continue to grow in the Word of God and, uh, you know, things that you thought you've known and understood, uh, you begin to get a deeper understanding of what's in, uh, what's in God's, uh, God's Word and, and truly how the whole Bible just ties together. So, uh, again, it's been one of the most rewarding things that I've ever done in my life. Uh, I am I, uh, so thankful that I've had the opportunity to do it. It's difficult when you are the age of 44 and 45, as I was, to go back. Uh, I remember doing a lot of studying when I was in school for papers and such in college, and, uh, but it doesn't even compare, uh, particularly when you're a little older because the, the memory verses can become uh, kind of a, a struggle and kind of a challenge. So you're, you're uh, challenged in some different ways, I think, when you're older. But boy, what a rewarding course of study it is for anybody that is interested in doing that. And it only increases your faith and increases your knowledge in the Word of God. Now, Scott, how long, how long have you been a Christian? How long have you been a member of the church? I was baptized in 1984, and uh, my grandfather, Jack Hayes, uh, baptized me. We were at a meeting, uh, in a meeting at the Pine Grove Church of Christ, where I grew up. Uh, Brent Gallagher was the minister there, and Frank, ah, Frank <laughs> yeah, I love Brent. Uh, and uh, Brother Frank Hickenbotham was a uh, holding the meeting uh, there that week, and uh, I had given consideration for quite a period of time of becoming a Christian and was never uh, able to take those steps, those first steps uh, there at church. And I remember I came home one night and I was just pacing the house uh, back and forth and back and forth because I knew what I needed to do. And uh, uh, Frank was such an instrumental part of that because of his lessons that week. My mom was on the phone. And uh, I remember pacing back and forth thinking, hurry up, Mom, hurry up, Mom. And finally she got off the phone and I said, uh, we need to call Pap. I need to be baptized. And we called my grandfather and uh, we went down to the Pine Grove Church of Christ. And I was baptized that evening at about 10 o'clock. And uh, it was a great, a great decision for me uh, to be able to do that. And then there were about nine others that were baptized actually that week That's uh, in that meeting. Several of them I'd gone to school with. So... Uh, it was a wonderful week, so many that had come to uh, the gospel call. Now, would you, let me ask you this question. You, know, you talked about pacing the floor, pacing the floor. Um, you know, I've had people talk to me about, well, I think I'd like to be baptized. Or I'm thinking someday that I, you know, I might be baptized. Mm -hmm. Or someday I might, well, I had one person tell me, you know, I think I need, to, I need to make a change. But they didn't mean it exactly in the biblical sense. They were looking to sort of restart their life in the sense of their career and stuff like that. But 
when people really understand what baptism is about, it gets to you, doesn't it? Yes, I mean, it does. You do not. I mean, it's a sense of urgency. Yeah, it, it is a sense of urgency, and you realize uh, what it is that Christ has done for us, uh, becoming sin for the world, and, and the great struggle that He would have had to go through physically uh, to die upon that cross, so that I could have that hope myself and you and everybody else that walks the face of the earth. Uh, through Christ, they can have the hope of eternal life. And, you know, the, the interesting thing is the importance of it. We live in a society where everybody's looking to extend, extend our life, extend our looks, uh, extend our body structure, extend our health. And we so many times look in the wrong places because Christ is the answer to all things in life and is the answer to eternal life. Uh, which I think all of us want to have. And once you come to that realization, there is that urgency, that importance to go ahead and get that done uh, so that you have that hope. Where's that old expression, what if you, if you want to get anything out of it, you've got to put something into That's it, right? That's right. That's and, right. And so many people, they, just, they, they don't put anything into eternity. Mm -hmm. And it's like you know, they get so caught up in this world, and you're like, wait a minute. You know, eternity and temporal, mm -hmm. those are two mm -hmm. concepts, and people just seem to put that off, and that's a shame that they do that. Uh, how long have you been preaching? I have been preaching since 1996. Uh, my grandfather, uh, my pap, probably the one of the closest individuals I've ever been to in my life, and uh, he, he was a, a part-time minister himself. He kind of did circuit preaching, and he was a farmer, and he lived about a mile and a half from where uh, I lived, and I spent so much time with him. And I look back and I think about Pap, and he was one of the greatest teachers I ever knew. Uh, and at the time he was teaching, I didn't know he was teaching, uh, <laughs> which is fun to take a look back and go, yeah, I remember when Pap told me this and uh, how some of that s sinks in. Uh, but he passed away in 1996, and he had... Uh, continued to preach every Sunday right up to about three months, three and a half months before he had passed away. And one of the congregations that he was preaching at had called me and asked me if I could fill in for his, his uh, Sundays, which was the first, fourth, and fifth Sunday. And uh, I, at the time, was working with the Waverly Church of Christ down in uh, West Virginia. They're north of Parkersburg. And I said, no, I said, I, I can't do it. Uh, Brother Ray Amos had called me. And that was in January when Pap was sick. And uh, Brother Ray called me again in February and said, uh, you know, we really need somebody to come and preach. And I said, Brother Ray, I said, I, I just, I really can't. And uh, he called me again in March. And finally I said, okay, I, I will be there in May. And I started uh, preaching there at the Middle Fork Church of Christ in May of 1996. And I did the first, the fourth, and the fifth Sundays. And uh, I'm so thankful to have had the opportunity to go and do that. And I'm thankful for uh, Brother Ray Amos's persistence to continue to call me. And, uh, you know, three times he called, and, and finally I said yes. And uh, I've, drawn, I, I've drawn a lot of strength from him in my life, learned a lot of lessons from him, even though I was not necessarily extremely close to him in a sense of, you know, growing up and working with him or anything like that. But, uh, you know, the fact that he continued to call and continued to see a need that, needed to be taken care of and wanted me to come and help him out and uh, uh, that for me is for for me is great one of my favorite memories of uh, brother brother Ray is he had gotten sick uh, not too long after I started preaching there and uh, he had gotten cancer bone cancer and uh, it would soon take his life but I remember one Sunday evening uh, he came into church and we'd usually stand in the there in the the little foyer, the little doorway, and, and talk before church started and their worship started. And uh, I said, how you doing, Brother Ray? And he said, well, he said, I'm okay. I knew he wasn't feeling well. And uh, he was talking to me a little bit about what the doctors told him. And he said, uh, I'll get better. He said, and if I don't, it's it's okay. Uh, I've lived a good life, and, and I'm ready to go home. And I've never forgot that conversation that I had with him because when we had that conversation, I was in my late 20s. And as you grow older, that conversation there becomes so much more meaningful um, as you draw closer in, in years to when your time is going to pass. The, what a great example that that was. And I think of Brother Ray and I think of my grandfather, uh, my, my pap, who 
live their life for Christ in the confidence that they had when the end of their days was was coming near. And I'm thankful for that example. And I I hope and I wish that we can get that message out to more people that, you know, in, in Christ there is nothing to fear and in Christ there is that hope of eternal life. Yeah, the longer, it seems like the longer we stay, the more people we know that have already gone on. Mm -hmm. And I imagine it's a big draw. I know when my dad had his surgery, and one of the things he told us, and you know, he had brain cancer, and we didn't know if he'd survive the surgery. Yeah. And he said, whichever way, I win. Exactly. I have people who will be anxious to see me, mm -hmm. either here or there. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a big difference. I wish more people would stop and really let that sink in. Yeah. Because, you know, Satan has a great way of just letting the hustle and bustle just get away from you. And before you know it, you're like, your life is over. Mm -hmm. It's gone. And mm -hmm. uh, it's very short. Um, tell me, you know, Scott, about studying. I mean, obviously studying was important to get through the program, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but uh, ongoing, how important is study to a preacher? I mean, what does he have to do to be uh, an effective student? Because obviously the study does not stop. No, the study continues every single day. And I've gotten to what I consider a neat position now is that I study not because I'm in a class and someone says you have to study this, but I study because I get the opportunity to study every single day and go back and take a look at some stuff that I still have questions about and that I still want to learn more and go a little deeper into uh, into this into the different subjects into the different books within the scriptures uh, and I love every single one of them there's there's so many great messages that uh, we can draw and, and I'm I'm certainly excited to take the opportunity on a daily basis to go and to study just a little more, whether it's just simply reading through some scripture or getting into some of my commentaries or spending some time in some books. I've been taking a look in the book of Revelation and uh, just trying to gain more understanding into the book of Revelation. And, uh, you know, it, it is so vitally important because what you do at the West Virginia School of Preaching is only the beginning of learning. Uh, and they will tell you uh, it is a foundation that, that is being laid. And, uh, you know, it's an intensive two-year program, but the foundation is laid. Then it's our responsibility to build upon it. And, uh, you know, I think certainly you see that there's people that enjoy uh, and have interest in certain things uh, within the Bible, but it's all important. You know, we find people that enjoy studying the Old Testament uh, more the Hebrew history or those that study enjoy studying the prophecy more those that enjoy taking a look at the gospels or the epistles I love looking at the epistles of the apostle Paul and uh, you know what he had to what he had to say to those churches during that period of time because it was so uh, it's such a great message that we can draw from what he had to write today because we see the same issues going on it's the same uh, it's the same problems and the same answers uh, for everything that we find today in this world, within the church, within ourselves, uh, is found in the Bible. It's a matter of us looking for it and studying and trying to understand. Now you're going to be, your official title is Director mm -hmm. of... Advertising and Recruiting. Recruiting. We'll put your uh, graduation, obviously it's already passed, but we'll put your graduation announcement up here on the screen. And one of the reasons I wanted to do that um, is to the bottom right there, has the West Virginia School of Preaching's address and phone number. So if anyone's watching would like to uh, follow up and learn more about the West Virginia School of Preaching, they can do that. Now, you're working with Andy Robinson. He's mm -hmm. been on our show, mm -hmm. um, and he does a very effective work and very very interested in watching uh, the development of the school. Yes. Um, how, how, long have you known, how, how long have you known Brother Robinson? I've known Brother Robinson for about two years. I first met him when I applied. Uh, to the West Virginia School of Preaching, and he is an absolutely wonderful uh, individual. I so appreciate him and his work ethic. Uh, I so appreciate his heart and his care for other people. And uh, it is just a, uh, a lot of fun for me to watch him uh, and work with him side by side because he is such a great servant of Christ uh, and has such a great desire to help others uh, come and know and understand uh, the gospel and, and help others uh, within their life to uh, just continue to, to you know, be a, be a good Christian 
and continue to grow in their faith and their Christian walk. So, uh, yeah, I f certainly appreciated him, and I look forward to working with him. And uh, he, a lot of what I'm going to be doing, he was doing before, uh, as far as the advertising and recruitment was uh, uh, concerned. And he was going into a lot of different congregations and talking about the school and also offering a gospel message, and that's part of what I will be doing. Uh, and I want to extend the uh, uh, opportunity to anybody that wants to call us to learn more about the school, uh, that I can come and uh, talk about the school, also be able to uh, deliver a sermon uh, during any period of time on a Sunday or Wednesday or any, any day of the week. Um, be certainly more than willing and happy to go and to do that so we could uh, you know, talk about the great things truly that we're doing with a lot of young men that have that desire to serve God. Now let me ask you a question. Um, the, you know, you, your your grandfather obviously had you know mm -hmm. a profound influence on you. You knew preachers. You know about the church. You go to the school, and I mean, you know, it's you, they told you it was going to be hard. I mean, mm -hmm. they told you. I mean, they yes. don't hide that. Yes. But were there? I mean, were there some things? You know, going to the school, and and going into preaching even because you were social work and that kind of direction. Mm -hmm. Uh, what kind of things surprised you or, or caught you off guard, positive or negative? It doesn't really matter. Uh, but what are some things that sort of surprised you you didn't really anticipate? Um, one of the things, and I'd mentioned earlier, was some of the stuff that you thought you knew and that you had studied uh, that maybe you didn't have as good a grasp on that as, as what you thought. Uh, so the, the, the learning has been just incredible. Uh, and you know, the learning never ends. The learning never ceases. And I think I've come to a better understanding of that uh, since the period of time that I've been at the school and been a student is there's there's so much more. And even when you think you have a grasp on uh, a concept or something within a scripture or a verse, there's so much more. And I think as you continue to grow older, verses don't change their meaning, but you begin to understand more the depth of them. Uh, just because of your life experiences, so I, I guess in a sense there's been there's been some surprise uh, surprise with that. Um, it has been the the study is so rich and so absolutely fantastic in, in all things uh, that we that we do, and it's your thinking gets fine tuned. I guess it'd be a good way to say it as far as sermon development and uh, you know that was a lot of fun to take a look at how do we study how do we start to break down uh, topics and passages of scripture in different verses uh, so there, there's that that you know I don't know if we can say it's a surprise or not but it's been uh, I underestimated the value of specifically that uh, going into going into the school um, the other thing, it's, it's not a surprise, but it's just so saddening. Uh, the people that re just reject, um, you know, the gospel and reject uh, God and, and Christ Jesus and the fact that he walked here upon the earth. And you just work diligently to be able to plant seeds and, and hopefully give people an opportunity to think about some things in relation to their salvation and uh, um, I think that's the saddening thing of, of the job is you find so many uh, that reject that great gospel of Christ. So, Well, Scott, you know, you and I uh, did a little bit of work together mm -hmm. at the West Virginia School of Preaching Future Preachers Training Camp for young men yes. before, you know, in high school age. And it was great to be with you. Glad you can be on the program with us. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Well, that's all the time we have today. We're glad again for Scott Judge for coming our way. Thanks for watching our program today. Before we close our program today, we'd like to take a moment and review this roadmap to heaven with you since the matter is so serious. There are many incorrect set of directions out there and sadly so many people are following them. For example, some people have been given wrong turns. They believe things such as faith only, works only, or grace only. Or some attempt to change the order of the turns, being baptized before they even believe. Some people fail to realize what point they are on the map don't even open their Bibles yet and they think they're saved already. As a person travels in a car or takes a hike, has to follow the proper directions, so we must follow the proper directions to heaven. Let's take a look at the directions on our roadmap to heaven here. You have to look at these passages in your Bible for yourself. We'll just list the steps, the turns, on the way. 
First is to believe or to have faith. And then number two, to repent, to turn away from sin. Number three is to confess that Jesus is the Son of God. Number four is immersion or to be baptized, which is a burial in water to have your sins washed away. And then you're added to the church by the Lord, not by a group of people or not by giving some kind of testimonial experience or things like that. And then once you're added, you need to serve and worship the Lord faithfully all the days of your life. And that, the key word's faithfully. You don't waver. And that's very important. We need to keep in mind, too, that in Noah's day, there was a big flood, and only people in the ark were saved from the flood. The same is true today. There is no salvation outside the Lord's church. Where are you on the roadmap to heaven? Thanks for watching our program. Please let us know if we can assist you with further information for your journey.